Hello everyone. Uh, in this video, I will talk about uh, the chapter five in the Ross book. Um, so I plan to spend uh, three lectures on this chapter. Um, last last uh, Tuesday, we've covered the first part, and in this video, we'll cover the second part. Um, in the in-person meeting this coming Friday, we will cover the last part. Um, so. After you finish this video, uh, please don't forget to finish um, the quiz 2 on uh, Connect System. So if you go all the way down, uh, you're going to see quiz 2 here. Okay, um, So it's different from all those past due uh, homeworks. Okay? Still, I'm working on uh, this issue with Connect System just to remove them. It takes some time. Um, okay. Now, if for some reason you were not able to attend um, the lecture this past Tuesday, um, here are the materials that we've covered. So basically, you can just read uh, those three pages. That's page one, two, and three. So we've covered until here. So you can pause and uh, read through those notes. Okay. Um, all right, so now let's get started with the new material. But before we get started, I would also love to do a recap for our lecture on February 9th, which was um, the past Tuesday. Um, so first, we've learned uh, to recognize different types of cash flow streams. Uh, we've learned what is ordinary annuities, uh, annuities due, uh, perpetuities, and complex cash flows. If you forget, just go back to the um, notes. And secondly, we learned how to calculate the future value of ordinary annuities. Uh, the basic principle is that the future value of a stream of cash flows should equal to the sum of future values of individual cash flows. Uh, using that principle, we have derived the formula for future values of ordinary annuities. Um, so we have the first part, uh, but then remember the R always equals to the interest rate per period equals to I divided by M. Okay, so we can replace that. And also this T is number of periods that equals to M times M, which is number of periods per year times number of years. Okay, so those two are essentially equivalent. Um, so here are the examples that we did uh, towards the very end of this lecture, but I would love to go through it here again. Um, if you already mastered all those, uh, you can just skip this part. Um, all right, so the first one, uh, if we receive $500 per year for 10 years and the interest, interest is compounded annually at 5%, what is the future value? Um, okay, so... We can, of course, you plugging everything into the formula and calculate the number. Uh, I'm just going to skip this part. Now, I want to talk about the financial calculator. To calculate the future value of this one, we have to think about what are the values for different uh, parameters. Okay. Uh, so the num n obviously is 10. Okay. So 10 is um, number of periods. The interest rate per period is 5%. And the PV is, okay, the PV should be zero. Uh, I'll talk about this in a second. Um, and the payment is $500, okay? That is how much you pay every period. So that is the payment. Remember in the previous P, uh, chapter, the payment is always zero because that's just one single cash flow. But here we have a series of same amount payments. Now we compute the future value. Okay, so that, that there we get this number. Now I do wanna spend a minute to talk about the present value. Okay, um, when we calculate the future value of annuities, the PV would stand for additional cash flows on top of the annuities payment. It does not stand for the present value of the annuities. Okay, uh, so what does that mean? That means that uh, at time zero, we see that uh, there's no cash flow, right? So there's no additional cash flow. That's why the PV equals to zero. Okay, um, now what about in this second example? Um, most of you probably think that the PV in this case should be equal to zero now. Uh, it should equal to $500. Uh, that is wrong. Okay, um, Because the PV stands for additional cash flow on top of annuity payments. 
Okay. Now, if you look at this cash flows, it's actually an annuity due. Okay. For annuities due, there should be a cash flow at the beginning of each period. So this five hundred dollars is simply part of the annuity payment or the uh, annuities due payment. So the PV should equal to zero because the five hundred dollars is part of the um, annuities due. So there's no additional ones. Okay. Um, what about this one? Okay. Now, if we look at this cash flow, it's already a complex cash flow. Okay, so when we input all the cash flows using um, the time value of money functions, we can think of think of the first uh, the cash flow at time zero as one hundred plus five hundred. So this five hundred would go with all those equal dollar payments. So they constitute a annuity due payment and there is another one hundred dollars and that we can put it as pv okay that is the additional cash flow um and next one what about this okay uh so if you look at this it's actually from time one to time ten those are ordinary annuities right so um but there is additional cash flow at time zero Okay, so if we want to compute the future value of this stream of cash flow, although it's complex cash flow, we can put uh, the PV as 300, okay, because that is additional cash flow on top of annuity payment. Okay, uh, so one thing to always remember is that if the cash flow is a very regular annuities or annuities due, um, the PV would always equal to zero because there's not going to be additional ones. But if it's a complex cash flow, then there probably uh, will be some uh, additional cash flow. Okay. All right. Um, so now the second one. Uh, so to solve this one, uh, we can also use calculator at first. Uh, use the formula at first, I'm sorry, uh, but we can also use financial calculator. Let me show you how to use financial calculator. Uh, so second, let me clear the memory. So go second, uh, clear time value of money, and second, quit. Um, so that will set all the numbers on the third row equal to zero. Um, so n is number of periods. So in this question, one period is a month. So we have five years times 12. So that's 60 periods. I over Y is 12 divided by 12. I over Y. PV is, again, PV is zero. Okay, not because the present value of the stream of cash flow is zero, simply because at time zero, there is no additional cash flow. Okay, it's a very regular uh, in um, ordinary annuity. Uh, payment is 100. And then we compute future value. Okay, now the third one. Uh, if it's $500, sorry, I'll just drag this away. Okay, um, so $500 per quarter for 10 years. In the next one, uh, you have $500 per quarter for 10 years. Therefore, each period is one quarter. So number of periods will be 10 times 4. So 40 quarters. Uh, interest rate per quarter will be 12 divided by 4. Okay. Uh, PV, again, it's 0 because there's no additional ones. Payment is five hundred dollars, and then we compute future value. Okay, so that's the next one. All right, now let's move on to the new material. Uh, so the next topic is to solve for payment in an ordinary annuity. Suppose you know uh, the future value and uh, number of periods and so on and so forth. Uh, we again we go from the uh, formulas that we derived last time and then we can easily uh, find the payment from there just move this part 
uh, and to the left side. Okay, uh, so that's the formula. Now here's an example. Suppose you want to have fifteen hundred dollars, fifteen hundred thousand at the end of fifteen years. Um, how much do you need to deposit uh, every month? Um, so of course we can solve this one using formula. Okay, so the payment should equal to the um, future value times the and the uh, numerator num uh, interest rate per period that's six percent divided by twelve, uh, because each period is a month. In the denominator, we again plugging everything, so the uh, number of periods will be fifteen times twelve. Okay, that's how many months are there. So every month you need to uh, put if you put $51.58 uh, every month, by the end of the 15th year, you will have $15,000. Um, now, if we want to use a financial calculator, here's what we do. Okay. Um, so the N will equal to, let me again clear the memory. N is uh, 15 years times Okay, n equal um, n. I over y is interest rate per month. So um, 6 divided by 12. And I over y. Uh, PV is 0 because you're not, de you're not depositing any additional cash flows here. So PV is 0. Uh, payment is something we need to calculate. And future value and then you compute payment okay now notice that uh, the payment is also negative here okay so it's kind of the same lo a similar logic um, a financial calculator is assuming that uh, you're depositing every month and then you take it out and then therefore the payment is cash inflow and future value is cash outflow or otherwise right so you can have payment as cash um, outflows and PV, uh, future value as cash inflows. So those two, again, they are always of opposite signs. Okay, so that's this. Uh, I also have all the inputs here so that you can refer to. Um, the next type of question we sometimes we're interested in is to solve for the interest rate in an ordinary annuity. Okay, uh, because the formula is kind of difficult to derive, uh, we're just going to jump into the examples. Suppose you hope to have $30,000 um, in five years, and you get to save $400 by the end of each month. Uh, what rate of return do you need? So here, we're, uh, we know that you were depositing money every month, uh, and it's the same amount, so it's, annuity, it's an ordinary annuity. Um, now, so to find the rate of return, um, the first step, we can find the rate of return per period or interest rate per month. Okay, so that's the first step. And then if the question asks us for the interest rate per year, we can uh, do a simple conversion. Okay, so let's do this. Okay. Um, uh, $30,000 is obviously the future value. So 30000 is the future value. Okay. And how many periods? Uh, 5 years times 12 months. Okay, so 60 periods. I over Y is what we need to calculate. Uh, PV is again 0 because you're not depositing additional amount uh, at the very beginning. You're just depositing the uh, same amount every month. So those are all part of the pay, uh, payments. So the payment is $400. Okay. Now, please note that the payment and the future value, when you input both at the same time, they have to be of opposite signs, right? Because you're either depositing all the time and then take it out, or you're uh, receiving uh, um, cash flows all the time and then you're going to pay it back, right? So those two are always like cash inflow and cash outflow. So this one has to be negative, okay? So then we compute I over Y. So every month we need to have 0.73%, okay? So that's interest rate per month. 
If we want to know interest rate per year, then we simply use the per month um, interest rate times 12. That's 8.78%. Okay. So depending on what the question is asking you for. Okay. Um, now, um, the next type of question. Um, what is the present value of an ordinary annuity? Uh, so let me first use a numerical example to show you the basic principle. Right? So the basic principle is that the present value of a stream of cash flows should equal to the sum of present values of individual cash flows. So it's kind of similar to the future value calculation. right? So here's a numerical example. Um, so suppose you have a cash flow that looks like this. What is the present value? So the idea is that we're going to calculate the present value of each cash flow and then add up everything. So the present value of the first cash flow is $500, and uh, um, we discount it for one period. So we have the to the power of one. And the second one, um, we discount it for two periods from time two to zero. Uh, so um, it's in the denominator, it's the um, uh, square. And the third one, and fourth one, and fifth one. Okay. Now we have the present value of every uh, cash flow. We simply add up everything. Okay, so the present value of the whole ca um, stream of cash flows will equal to two thousand one hundred and six dollars and eighteen cents. Okay, so here that's the basic idea. Now le let's uh, um, let's derive the formula using a more generic case. Suppose you have uh, a stream of cash flows that looks like this. You receive payment every period for a T period. Okay. Now, to calculate the present value, we simply find the PV of each cash flow and then add up. So for the first one, um, the present value will discount it for just one period. Okay, So it's one here. For the second one, we discount it for two periods, and so on and so forth. Okay. So now, since uh, in each term, we have this payment uh, that is the same. So we can take it out, and then we can collect all the other terms together. Okay. If you look at uh, the terms in the parenthesis, we can see that um, each uh, th this is actually another geometric sequence. right? So each term is simply the previous term multiplied by 1 over 1 plus r. Okay, so the similar idea, if it's a geometric sequence, the, the sum of it, it we can uh, collapse it into a very simple uh, form. So uh, we have, eventually we have this. Okay, so that's the uh, formula. Now, of course, oftentimes we don't know R directly uh, or T directly, so we make another conversion, right? So R is interest rate per year divided by number of periods, and T is number of uh, periods per year times number of years. Okay, uh, all right, so that's the formula. Now, let me show you an example. Um, Suppose your grandma offers to give you $1,000 per year for the next 10 years, and the interest rate per year is 5%. What is the present value? Uh, we can plug in, of course, we can plug in everything into the formula and calculate PV. Okay, um, so that's the formula. Now we can also use financial calculator. In the financial calculator, um, the N is 10. That's the number of periods. Um, I over Y is going to be 5%. Uh, and the payment is 1,000, of course. And the future value, um, now I'm just going to tell you that it's going to equal to 0, but I'm going to explain why in a second. Okay? Um, and then we compute future, uh, present value. Okay? Uh, all right. So. When we calculate the present value of an annuities, the future value on the financial uh, FV button on the financial calculator stands for additional cash flow on top of the annuity payment at the end of the last period. So it's kind of similar to uh, the case when we are calculating um, future value of a stream of cash flow. The PV will stand for the additional cash flow at the very beginning. Okay, so here when we compute the present value, the FV stands for the additional cash flow at the end. Um, so again, I'm going to give you several examples. 
Um, in the first one, what is the feature uh, FV button? Um, so it's going to equal to zero because at the end, there is no additional cash flow. This $500 is simply part of the annuity payment. Um, in the next one, what is going to be the future value? Turns out that it's still zero because this is an annuity due. For annuity due, uh, all the cash flows happens at the very beginning of a period. So at time 10, there's supposed to be zero dollars. Okay? So FV is zero. There's no additional. Um, next one. Um, if we look at this one, it's actually a complex cash flow, right? But we can think of it as a stream of annuities due, like in the previous example, plus some additional cash flow, $100 at time 10. So in this case, we can input FV as 100 if we want to solve for the present value of the whole thing. Okay. Um, next one. So... If we look at this, again, it's a complex cash flow because the amounts are different. However, we can think of the last one as $500 plus $100. Okay? So FV now in this case will equal to $100 okay? because that $500 goes with all the other payments to form the um, annuities payment. Okay. So the bottom line here is that uh, in the previous example, although... Um, in the previous example, uh, although uh, you are gonna receive one thousand dollars at the uh, towards the very end of the uh, period, uh, but that one thousand dollars is part of the annuity payment, so the FV button should equal to zero because there's no additional. Okay. Um, and I'm just gonna quickly show you how to calculate the future uh, present value of the last cash flows. Okay. So n will equal to, so I'm solving the present value for the last cash flows. Okay, so the n will equal to 10 because there are 10 um, payments. I over y, let's say 6%. Okay, I'm just making up a number. Um, payment is 500. Future value is 100. Okay. So now here, the payment and future value, they are of the equal sign because uh, they are both cash inflows, right? The future and present value would be of opposite sign, okay? Um, so now let's compute PV, okay? So that's the PV for the last one. Now let's talk about um, a very special type of annuity, uh, which is called amortized loan. Um, so here's the definition of the amortized loan. You can pause for a second and read this. Uh, but let me give you an example. So suppose uh, you're borrowing money from somebody else. So think about what are the ways to repay back. So uh, the most common way we could think about is probably like this. So you borrow at time zero and uh, in each period, um, you simply repay the interest. And towards the very end, you pay back all the principles. Okay, so this type of loan repayment, we call it a bullet loan. Now, in a, an alternative way is to pay back the money like this. Okay, so you borrow the principal at time zero, and in the following uh, T periods, um, in each period, you just repay uh, the same amount. Okay. So this type of loan, we call it amortized loan. So a lot of the uh, consumer um, consumer loan is actually amortized loan, such as mortgages or car loan. Uh, so what happens within each payment is that it equals to, you not only repay the interest, but also you make some principal repayment. So that means over time, you're repaying down the principals. Therefore, at time t, you don't need to make the huge sum amount, a uh, huge sum um, um, a payment. All right. So, what are the questions we might be interested in the amortized loan? The first one is, what is the equal monthly payment given an interest rate that the lender charges? So it's like you go to a bank, you take a mortgage, you want to know how much do I need to pay every month. 
And the second question we might be interested in is, out of each payment, we know there are two components, but we want to know how much of it goes towards uh, each uh, component. Okay. Um, so we're going to learn uh, to solve the two questions. Okay. Now regarding the se second question, uh, intuitively, uh, we should know that um, over time, the interest payment in each payment will go down because uh, over time you already paid down a lot of the principal so you owe less over time therefore they would charge you less interest on the other hand uh, each month you're still paying the same amount um, therefore the interest component goes down so the principal repayment would go up so that is why whenever you borrow from the, from the bank uh, in the first few months um, the payment almost all of them goes towards paying the interest, but towards the very end, you're paying very little interest. So you're making a lot of principal repayment. Okay, so we'll also see this in uh, in the calculation uh, we're gonna uh, see later. Okay, all right, so let's look at the first question. How do we uh, get to know how much we need to pay each period? Okay, uh, so think about, um, so there are typically two parties in, uh, in any, um, lending relationship there are the lenders and the borrowers okay now let's first think about the question from the lender's perspective at time zero they're gonna uh, give you the principal and then in the following two periods uh, every period they would receive the payment okay so for the lenders of, of course the um, cost of this lending relationship has to equal to the benefit Right, so the cost is the principal they give you, and the benefit are all the future uh, payments. Okay, and the PV of all the future payments will be the benefit of it. Okay, so those two has to be equal, right? Um, how do the bank make money? They make money by charging the interest rate, so, right? So you're gonna compute the PV using a specific uh, interest rate. Okay, and that is the money they make. Uh, so to calculate the PV, uh, we already learned how to do that once we know the payments, right? So within this, using this, we can derive the formula for payment. Okay, so the payment equal to the PV uh, times the um, this part. Okay, so it's kind of goes back to the question of knowing the P, um, present value and calculate the payment. Okay. Now, let's look at a concrete example. Suppose you found a perfect home and you take out a $150,000 30-year mortgage with monthly payment and an APR of 6%. Now we want to know what is my monthly payment. Okay. Uh, as I said just now, um, a key to understand is that the principal that you take now should equal to the present value of all the money you're going to repay in the future. Okay, so now the question boils down to um, the case where you know the present value, but you want to calculate the payment. Okay, so first we can use the formula to solve the payment. Okay, we can just plug in everything into the formula in the previous page. Um, and we can also use financial calculator. Okay, so those are the parameters. Okay, let me just show you. Um, so again, I'm going to clear the memory. Okay. N is um, 30 years, so now the payment happens monthly, so each period is a month. So 30 times 12 equals to 360, and interest rate per period will be 6 divided by 12, so 0.5 is the interest rate per month. Pay PV is what we have right now, what we borrow right now, so that's PV. Uh, payment we don't know and the future value it equals to zero okay um, this FV stands for again the additional cash flow at the end of the 30th year okay because you're not paying any additional amount you're just paying the same amount every period so there's no additional amount um, so FV is zero so now we compute payment okay so that means every month you will pay eight hundred and ninety nine dollars and thirty three cents all right, now the next type of question, we want to know within each payment, 
uh, how much of it goes towards principal and how much of it goes towards the interest payment. Okay, so here's how we do that. Okay, uh, in each month at the very beginning we know the remaining balance of the principal owed. Okay, and and we can also calculate the monthly payment using the method we just learned. Uh, once we know that. We can calculate the interest repayment for each period. That simply equals to how much you owe at the beginning of that period times the interest rate the bank charge every month. Um, and then the difference between the monthly payment and the interest payment will equal to the repayment of the principal. Okay. And lastly, because you made some principal repayment, we can calculate what is our outstanding balance of the loan at the end of this period. Okay. It equals to how much you owe at the very beginning minus how much you repaid during this period. Okay. Now, let's look at um, um, the numbers month by month. Okay. In the first month, okay, just using the previous uh, example, in the first month, uh, we haven't paid anything yet, so we owe exactly uh, $150,000. In monthly payment, we just calculate it's $899.33. Um, so the interest payment in this month will equal to $150,000 times the interest rate, which is 0.5%. Okay, and that equals to $750. Now the difference between the payment and the interest will be $149.33. So that means during this month, this amount goes towards repaying the principal. Now after you make the payment, how much do you owe now? That will be $149,850. Okay, that we get this number by using um, the amount you owe at the beginning minus the amount you repaid. Okay. Now going forward to the second period, at the very beginning, how much you owe, that will equal to how much you owe uh, at the end of the previous period. Okay. Uh, and the monthly payment is the same. Interest payment, again, the balance at the beginning times 0.5%. We see that this interest payment already goes down by a little. Now, because we owe less now, okay? And the repayment equals to the monthly payment minus the interest payment again. And this amount goes up compared to the previous month. Um, and this is because we're paying less interest, okay? But in total, we're paying the same amount and less of it goes towards interest. Therefore, uh, we're making more uh, pay, um, repayment towards the principal, okay? And outstanding balance, Okay, um, the beginning balance minus the repayment of principal. Okay. Now I would love you to pause for a second and fill in the third row. Okay, so find out um, those numbers for the third period. Okay, all right. So those are the numbers for the third period. Okay, so hopefully by using this table you understand how do we uh, calculate um, how do we break down uh, the each payment in the ammo test loan. Okay. The last topic in this video is about annuities due. So we're interested in knowing what is the future value and what is the present value of annuities due. Uh, so remember the basic principle still uh, follows. So the future value of a stream of cash flow equals to the sum of future value of individual cash flows and the same thing for the present value, okay? So um, suppose we have a stream of annuities due that looks like this, okay? So at the beginning of each period, we have payment, okay? And goes on for T periods. Uh, so the first part, we want to compute the future value. Okay, so we want to compute the future value for each payment and then add up everything. For the first cash flow, um, from 0 to T, there are actually T periods. So its future value is going to equal to payment times 1 plus T to the power of T. For the second one, from time 1 to T, there are T minus 1 periods. Okay, um, so that's on the power. Uh, and it, then it goes on. Okay, for the last one, it's going to be uh, 
earning interest for only one period from t minus one to t. So its its future value is pre, uh, payment times one plus r to the power of one. Okay. Now again, we collect uh, uh, all the payments together and uh, put all the other terms in this bracket. Um, now. Inside the bracket, it's again a geometric sequence. Therefore, we can uh, have a very simplified formula for the sum. Okay. Now, if we look at this formula, the, the product of the first two terms is actually the first future value of an ordinary annuity that is of the same payment, same R, and same T. Okay. As a result, the future value of annuities due simply equals to the future value of an ordinary annuity that is of the same R, same T, and same payment, and then multiplied by 1 plus R. Okay. Um, I'll explain why is it the case in a second. Okay. Now, the second part, we want to compute the PV. Okay. Um, so first, we compute the PV for each cash flow and then add up. For the first payment, uh, because it's already at time zero, so we are not going to discount it. So it's to the power of zero, meaning we're not discounting it. For the second one, we discount it for one period from one to zero. So on the power, it's just one. Um, the last one, um, it occurs at time t minus one, so we're going to discount it for t minus one periods. Okay. Um, again, those are uh, we follow the same uh, similar steps, okay, geometric sequence, and then we calculate uh, the sum. Uh, if you look at this formula again, the product of the first two um, items is actually the present value of an ordinary annuity that is of the same R, same T, and same payments. Okay. As a result, the present value of an annuity is due equals to the present value of an um, a corresponding ordinary annuity times 1 plus r. Okay. Now you probably already noticed that for annuities due, its future value and present value is always um, the future value or present value of an ordinary annuity and then times 1 plus r. Okay. This is because that the in annuities due, each payment comes one period earlier than its counterpart in the ordinary annuity. Therefore, when we compute the future value, each cash flow will be um, compounded for one more period, meaning it earns interest for one more period. Remember, uh, in the ordinary annuity, the first cash flow happens at time one. Therefore, it's only going to, for the first one, it's going to be earning interest for t minus one period. But in this annuity due, the first cash flow happens at time zero. Therefore, it's going to be earning interest for t periods. So for each one, it's going to be earning interest for one more period. Um, so that's where the 1 plus r comes from, right? 1 plus r stands for that it's earning interest for one more period, okay? Now, when we think about PV, uh, each period, each cash flow is going to be discounted for one less period compared to ordinary annuity. So remember, in the ordinary annuity, the first cash flow happens at time one, therefore it's going to be discounted for one period. Um, however, in annuity still, the first one happens at time zero, so it's not going to be discounted. Okay, So for each one, it's going to be discounted for one less period. If we discount less, that means uh, the present value is going to be higher. right? So less discount, um, uh, the value is going to be higher. Okay. Uh, so that is, again, where this 1 plus r comes from. It's actually uh, 1 divided by 1 plus r to the power of negative 1. Okay, so this can for one less period. Okay, so uh, just remember that, um, again, it's always the case that the present value or future value of annuity due is 1 plus r times the present value or future value of a corresponding ordinary annuity, okay? Um, and that also means that in annuities due, its future value or present value is always higher than uh, the corresponding ordinary annuity. Now, uh, we want to see how do we calculate annuities due problems, okay? How do we get those numbers? 
So here's an example. Suppose we want to compute the future value and present value of annuities due that pays one thousand dollars per year, okay, uh, for ten years. Obviously, we can plug in everything into the formula, okay. So we can get um, calculate the future value and present value, okay. Now I, I just want to show you how to use financial calculator. Okay. If you want to use financial calculator, it's actually quite similar to ordinary annuity. Um, the only difference is that um, we have to have one additional step. Okay. So let me just show you. Um, in the financial calculator, there are two modes. One is end mode, which applies to ordinary annuity, meaning cash flows happen that happens at the end of each period. And there's another mode that's called uh, beginning mode that applies to annuities due. This means that the cash flow happens at the beginning of each period. Okay. To set the mode, we're gonna do uh, use this uh, BGN um, function. Okay, that is the secondary function for the payment button. Okay, so we're gonna go second and payment. Now you see that it's in end mode. Okay, we wanna change it to beginning mode if we were solving a problem for annuities due. So we're gonna hit down arrow button. Oh no, I'm sorry. We're gonna hit um, second enter. Okay, if you hit second enter, you see that uh, at the top of the screen there is BGN. That means the calculator now is in BGN mode already. Okay, mm, once it's in the BGN mode, we're gonna uh, uh, quit the setting. Okay, so we're gonna go second and quit. Even if you quit, you will still see the BGN. Okay, so that means anything we do uh, in the financial calculator now, it's gonna be uh, considered as an annuity due. Okay, so the second step is actually exactly the same as ordinary annuity. Okay, so we're gonna plug in everything we know and compute for the unknowns. So for the first one, if we are computing the future value, the n is 10. n i over y is um, interest rate, so that's 10 as well, 10%. Um, when we're computing future value, the present value, PV stands for additional cash flow. Okay, so there's no additional cash flow, so zero PV. Payment is 1,000. Payment, and then compute future value. Okay, so that is the future value. Now, uh, let's clear the memory. Second, uh, clear time value of money, and then second, quit. Okay, we are, we're still in the BGM mode. Okay, so the second step, we wanna compute PV. N is 10. I over Y is 10. Um, payment is 1000. Future value is, uh, the FV stands for additional cash flow, so it's zero. And compute PV, okay? So that is the PV for annuities due. All right, so uh, I'm also showing you uh, the detailed step in this table. Okay, now once we finish any question regarding the annuities due, we want to set the financial calculator back into the end mode. Um, if you don't do that, um, and uh, let's say next question re is related to ordinary annuity, then that's going to create a problem, right? So every time you finish that, you want to um, set it back to end mode. So we're going to do second, enter, second a payment. Okay, so now we're again in the setting mode. To change um, the mode, we're gonna again go second, enter. Okay, um, so really the way to change is just second, enter. Okay, if we click second, enter again, it goes back to BGN, okay? So second, enter. Now we're gonna quit, second, quit. Okay, so that is how you solve a problem related to annuities due. Uh, later in the homework, you probably see some questions that ask you to calculate the payment or calculate the number of periods regarding annuities due. Um, for those questions, also you wanna set it to be in the BGN mode, okay? So the bottom line is that every time you see a question for annuities due, you're gonna set it to BGN mode. Every time you see a question relating to ordinary annuity, you need to use the end mode, which is the default mode. Okay, so you don't see the end here uh, because that's by default. All right. 
Uh, so that is really the end for this video. I hope you find it uh, helpful and uh, I'm gonna see you in class and don't forget to do quiz two.